So here we go, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Boot Room, the series where we look ahead to Town's next game as a little trip to Devon for Town as they take on Exeter City. Um, I'm joined today by good old Stuart Watson. Stu, um, another long trip, a game on Sky. How are you feeling going into this one, my friend? Yeah, looking forward to this after the frustrations of, of the Cheltenham draw of another team coming to Portman Road and parking the bus, low block, bodies on the line, Ips, which couldn't find a way through. I'm looking forward to this being a completely different type of game, hopefully a more open, entertaining game. Exeter, a team that carried a bit of momentum after going up from League Two last season, um, attack-minded, score lots of goals, concede lots of goals as well, and, and hopefully this type of game kind of suits Ipswich that, that little bit more. Definitely. And um, yeah, Exeter, ninth in League One currently. Of course, got a new manager in Gary Caldwell. He's now had a few games, you know, big win last weekend, uh, a late winner to beat Peter Barra 3 2. Of course, had an absolutely thrilling Devon derby against Plymouth in that 4 2 defeat. Um, but what have you looked into with Exeter? As you say, it's going to be a, it's going to be an entertaining game because we're conceding goals, they're conceding goals, but they're scoring goals and we're scoring goals. So, hmm. well, it could be nil nil probably. But yeah, your thoughts on Exeter as well? Yeah, I mean, they've, they've, pretty much stuck with the, the core of the same team that got them promoted. Um, we've seen last season that it's not guaranteed against the teams that come up from the division below, which didn't beat any of them last season. They look better equipped for different types of, of challenges this season. Ipswich, um, Exeter's front players jump off the page for me. Giovanni Brown playing in the, in the pocket as the number 10 has got, got a decent number of goals to his name already. Uh, Sam, Nombe, Jay Stansfield on loan from Fulham is a very good player who Ipswich know all about. I think he was one that they they seriously considered in the summer. Um, Charlie Turnbull, the Ipswich coach, will have worked with him at, at Fulham. So Ipswich will be well aware of their attacking threats. You've reeled off some of their recent results and, and the goals that they've scored. Kieran McKenna's not so convinced that this is as wide open a game as it maybe looks on paper. They've changed manager fairly recently. Matt Taylor obviously uh, left to go to Rotherham in the division above. He's been replaced by Gary Caldwell, who was a centre-half in his day, um, played 50-odd games for, for Scotland, um, has come here with a, with a bit of managerial experience on his CV at Wigan and I think Partick, Partick Thistle more recently. Um, so he, he talks about them being quite compact defensively. So it'll be interesting to see what, what type of game this is. But Exeter being the home side, they're certainly not going to to kind of play with the low block that we've, we've seen from the likes of, of Cheltenham and Lincoln at, at Portman Road recently. So um, I'm sure McKenna's got some, some thoughts in mind about how best to approach this game, as always. Um, you mentioned right at the start this being on TV. That, that normally would have sent shudders down the spine, but it feels like Ipswich have maybe shaken that off a little bit. They've won... Two on the trot in front of the TV cameras. Could it could it be three? Um, we'll see. This is a tough game, but one one that uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, the twelve o'clock kickoff for, for town fans. I'm sure they're they're frustrated about that, but once again, another packed away, and it's going to be a good atmosphere. I'm sure. Let's talk about the team then, Stu. Um, we've got a lot of injuries at the moment. Um, you know the recent one with Dominic Ball is going to be out for a while. Um, give us some injury updates and also your team as a whole. Yeah, ball's out for the season. It's looking like re really disappointing for, for him. Knee injury that requires some surgery. Lee Evans and Shawnee Aluko aren't due back around till around Christmas time. Tyrese John Jules is another one that's joined them recently. Hamstring problem. I think they're still looking into that, deciding whether that requires surgery. But McKenna says that's going to be months rather than weeks. So just losing a few of those, the, the strength of this squad was its depth. And we talked about the different types of challenges. You can go from Cheltenham one week to Exeter the next week. You can play a long ball side. You can play a counter-attacking side. And I think McKenna had very purposely built a squad that had some variety in it that was ready to take on these different types of challenges. And when you start to strip away three, four, five of these specialist players, it just weakens Ipswich's hand a little bit. But there was some good news this week with, with uh, Gassan Ahadmi. Uh, who's become a bit of a forgotten man since he's he signed on deadline day from Burton and Greg Lee, both back in training this week. Um, this game comes too soon for both of those, but 
a couple of cup games coming up on the horizon. It had me cup tied for the Portsmouth game in the Papa John's. Um, but maybe Greg Lee gets some minutes in that on Tuesday night. And then Buxton coming up in the FA Cup. Hopefully both can can feature in, in that. And um, them two coming back just just uh, gives it switch a few more options. But yeah, going into this weekend, um, certainly, certainly down on numbers. Definitely. And uh, do you want to quickly just rattle out your team, team you'll you choose, team McKenna could possibly choose as well, so take it away. Mm. Okay, well, the, the team I've got here is Walton in goal, the usual back four of uh, Danassian, and that's uh, assuming that there's no repercussions from him coming off with a bit of a tight muscle. We're not sure which what that was last week, but I think he came off more as a precaution in the first half against Cheltenham. Uh, Wolferden, Edmondson, Davis. Um, central midfield two would be Morsi plus one other. I'd go with Cameron Humphreys again. I know people are saying he's young. You might have to manage him a little bit, and but he, he's he's playing really well at the moment and he's, he's just turned 19 years of age if he can't rattle out games at, at that age. I mean, he's a, he's a super fit lad as well. I think I'd go with him as uh, for the time being. Kamara is obviously a, an option as well. We've seen him come on and hit the post last weekend, but McKenna's been at pains to say that it's um, going to maybe be a few more weeks till he's kind of fully fully up to match fitness. He's, he's missed a lot of football, um, has Panucci Kamara, so I think they might just tread a little, little bit carefully with, with him for the time being. Um, top end of the pitch is always the discussion, isn't it? Um, I've got Burns on the right, Chaplin as the 10. For me, I'd be getting Kyle Edwards in from the start and replacing Marcus Harness. On the left-hand side, I think he looks like he's really got his mojo back, Kyle, and I thought he came on and looked the most likely to to break Cheltenham down last weekend. Um, unbelievable ball at the death that, that almost set up Kamara for, for a winner. Um, this is the sort of game, I think, if we, are, if we are talking about a bit more space and a bit more counter-attacking opportunities, I think Kyle Edwards is probably more suited to this than a Marcus Harness. And then you could make the same argument up top that maybe this is more of a Caden Jackson type of game than a Freddie Ladapo type of game. If you look at when Caden Jackson has been utilised by Kira McKenna, it has been away from home against teams with more attacking intent. Um, I think he started at both Sheffield Wednesday and Plymouth. You just have to double check that. But um, with this being a similar sort of ilk of game type of game, you wonder whether Jackson comes back in as, as part of that that forward rotation. So that's my stab at it. Um, another option that I've kind of got half in my mind is that with the goals that Ipswich have been conceding of late, might there come a time where they switch back to more of a traditional back three? Mm -hmm. And Cameron Burgess is kind of utilised in in that. If Zanassian was injured, for example, you could, you know, that that might be something that, that happens. But um Given it's extra away and there's going to be a bit of space, I think it will still resemble more of that four-two-three-one for now. But if if some of these sloppy goals keep going in, then it wouldn't surprise me if they just uh, went back to that proper back three when they were keeping clean sheet after clean sheet in the early days under McKenna. I think they they pushed it more to more of a, a back four in in the search of goals this season and scoring more, which has happened. Um, but there, there, there's a balance to be had, isn't there? That has indeed, yeah. It's always it was always interesting at two o'clock seeing what Kieran McKenna is going to do. And with some of these long trips, he's sat out of nowhere, brought in Caden Jackson from the start. Mm. So we shall wait and see. Well, ten o'clock little... yeah. this oh, yeah. weekend. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be weird. It's gonna be weird. It's just like uh, the, the Buxton game. That's gonna be a, sun, a Sunday at five p.m. So when's that gonna be? Four o'clock. Inter this could be interesting. In very interesting indeed. Um, but still, we got a little pause here, my friend. Some key stats going into the game, and we'll be back with your prediction. All right, Stu. Prediction time. Exodus City versus Itchwich Town League 1. This is the first time we've played each other in the league since the 50s. Sir Ralph Ramsey was our manager in the Division 3 South. So a very long time. The last time we played Exeter, of course, was in the Cup. They knocked us out in the Papa John's um, in 2020. Paul Lambert's in charge, of course. Lee Martin scoring the late winner. Um, but this is a very different town team. An extra now, League One side. What's your prediction, my friend? 
Uh, I've got to correct myself. First of all, it'll be eleven o'clock for the team news. Let's get that right. It'll be an hour oh, yeah. before. We've, we've all we've made a right mess of that between yeah. the two of us. Um, yeah, uh, going even further back, I remember Ipswich winning there in the early rounds of the League Cup in 2010, 11, yes. when they went all the way to the semi-finals and um, and uh, faced Arsenal that year. I think Ronan Murray scored that night at Exeter. But we're going back a little way to that. As you say, the last two games down there have, have been disasters, haven't they? It was kind of the beginning of the end for Paul Hurst. Um, very early on in, in that season, I remember him being completely irate off, after that performance. Um, penalty shootout that night, wasn't it? And um, as you say, the, uh, the Papa John's trophy game. So not been a particularly happy hunting ground in recent times, but so much has changed in, in the last year, year or so at both clubs. Um, prediction i've stalled long enough um i've done i've done a piece of predicting ipswich's next six games leading up to christmas so I, i'll go i have to go with what i've said in that and that is uh ipswich to win hopefully an open and entertaining game um by the narrowest of margins i've got them for a three two victory wow wow i think yeah everyone will take that right now and i'm sure sky cameras will be thinking happy days five goals <laughs> I'm thinking a bit differently, though. I don't know. Normally, when we go into these games, I think there's going to be loads and loads of goals. There normally there isn't. So, I've gone for a 1-0 town win. Just a professional job. Get a goal on in the 30th minute. There'll be a lot of chances, but I think both defence will keep out. And I think Walton will be back to his best, saving plenty of good chances. A lot of blocks from town. So, I'm going to go 1-0. Not as entertaining as a 3-2. Three points still on the board. Another clean sheet. We haven't had a clean sheet for a while. So, it'd be nice to get a clean sheet for the for the back four, back three, what we're going to be using. Um, but yeah, big game. Uh, Stu, thanks for joining me. Any other business? No other business. We better wrap up because we need to we need to start hitting the road and uh, beating that Friday traffic, mate. So um, yeah, I'll see you shortly and uh, looking forward to it. Indeed, my friend. Well, I uh, hope you've enjoyed another edition of The Boot Room. Uh, make sure to follow the game with us if you're not going. If you are going, safe travels and see you in Exeter. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>